Hi everyone, I'm back with another Colouring Heaven review. This is the issue that came out in February and it's called the Nouveau Fairy Special with 40 efflorescent and enchanting fairy designs by Herb Leonard. So Herb has had his own Colour in Heaven magazine before. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. <laughs> I'll put it up on the screen when I find out. Um, but yeah, this isn't the first time we've seen this particular artist in Colour in Heaven. But as you can see, this issue is all about fairies and it is in that Art Nouveau style. So let's have a look inside. So we've got our colour combination chart as usual and then we've got a little bit about Herb. So Herb was born in Germany but grew up in the United States where he lives today with his wife, son, two horses, four cats and a plethora of chickens. A childhood spent within the pages of beautifully illustrated books and comics led Herb to a love of illustration and artists, including the Pre-Raphaelites, Maxfield Parrish, Alphonse Mucha and Brian Froud. Now with a career in illustration spanning over 30 years, Herb has illustrated over 50 books and earned numerous awards and international acclaim. So you probably are familiar with his work, uh, so I'll just get straight into it. So as you can see, it's very much in that Nouveau style. You'll have all of this kind of panelling in the background and lots of decorative detail. So we've got what looks like a, a boy fairy here who has a little flower for a helmet. It's really sweet. And it looks as though he's ready to go to war with this twig. <laughs> um, and yeah, obviously loads of flowers and nature elements. So that boy was actually called the Bell Warrior with the June Beetle. This is bat and cat sort of amalgamated together. Um, you can see there is a little tiny fairy sat on the cat's back. And again, with the framing and things like that in the background, you can see we've got several little playful cats. Um, yeah, so it's it's very, very highly detailed, as you can see. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on each page because it is sort of within the same format for the most part with the background and stuff. So this one's called Bleeding Hearts. As you can see, we've got a female and a male and these bleeding heart flowers. Blossom and Bee. I absolutely love bees. Should have done this page, really. Um, probably will do it in the future. Then we have a cherry fairy. There's not a huge amount I can really say about these illustrations because they're so obviously beautifully illustrated. It's almost like looking at a piece of classical art, you know, it's rather than a colouring page. So yeah, cherries and cherry blossoms. Columbine and lunar moth. So lots of different moths here and the flowers as well. Then we've got something I can't pronounce. Uh, and moth <laughs> so more moths and daffodil and pup so I think this is a scotty or a westy terrier maybe it looks it looks as though it is so yeah this isn't my particular favorite style of images to color undeniably these illustrations are beautiful do not get me wrong but for me personally it's not something that I immediately jump to color I quite like more whimsical illustrations um, and something that's not so highly realistic as these and when i say realistic obviously fairies and huge frogs and things like that are uh, definitely within that realm of fantasy but i guess what i mean is that the high detail and the uh, just the look of the pages the art nouveau it's not you know specifically something i'd like to color but i do know that this is um very hugely popular with an awful lot of people so as you can see, this is one that I've begun. I'm going to show you this sort of close up into the light. I'll stand up so I can show you. Because I have used some metallic paints, some holographic paints, in fact. And I'll just, uh, I don't know whether I can get the right. Let me turn the light off. Does that work better? Not at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, they are absolutely stunning. I don't know whether I can show you super close up, but this particular green is called Emerald City and it sparkles with red and gold uh, and green, obviously. Then we've got this blue here, which is called Jellyfish and the purple in the background, more of a metallic colour, is called Neptune. And all of those paints are from KJ Designs by Karen, who you can find on Etsy. Her paints are absolutely top, top quality. So if you're looking for something luxury, something that is the best of the best, the creme de la creme uh, in the watercolour, metallic and glittery paint world, definitely go and check her paints out. They're fantastic. Um, the rest of it I did. Well, firstly, I, I coloured the girl with Prismacolors and then the actual foxglove flower in the background I did with Pan Pastels. So it, 
just looking at this flower I thought this is an awful lot of space to colour and create a smooth gradient with coloured pencils so I wanted something that I could do easier I thought about watercolour pencils something like that but I think pastels have worked really really well it's managed to kind of blend the pink and the yellow together and then I just used some acrylic paint this one here Windsor and Newton designers gouache actually it's gouache um, just to create these uh, these bits of shine on the foxglove so yeah I'm really happy with how that's turning out so far I've got plenty more to do on this page again that kind of level of detail and the amount of elements to colour on the page does scare me a little but even if it just stays like this I'm pleased with it. So the next one is hibiscus and snake as you can see we have the hibiscus or the hibisci is there a plural for hibiscus um, and then the big snake here and she's reading a book honeysuckle and hummingbird so as you can tell as we go through each page has a flower and a an, an animal some sort of wildlife counterpart along with of course the fairy not always though as you can see this one is simply the ice queen um i think i don't know what birds these are meant to be actually looking at this i mean it looks almost like a sparrow but i'm not sure uh, iris and bat so another one for those of you who like to colour your slightly creepier illustrations with your Halloween elements this one's lovely we've got larkspur and rosy maple moth so what I also like about this is that we have the names of the flowers because as you know I am terrible with botany and I also have this thing of trying to get the flower how it looks in real life. You know, when I'm colouring anything, I try and get it to look as realistic as I possibly can with my uh, skill set limited. But as you can see, they're all labelled, so you can just search them up. Like, for example, some of the uh, flowers that we've seen earlier in this book, I didn't recognise the name of, so I wouldn't have a clue where to start. And of course, you don't have to use realistic colour palettes, you know. You can colour them sky blue pink or whatever you want to do, but I do like to try and make them quite realistic so this one's called madam butterfly again not sure with the birds it could be a robin but then of course we have the butterflies uh, and the butterfly wings as the fairy wings here and i really love her costume as well this wrap around um i think empire line dress then we've got mantis and thistle this is another one i considered coloring as my first page uh, as you can see we have the huge thistles at the bottom and here's the praying mantis I'm just wondering how Herb has chosen the uh, the insects and the creatures for this book. I wonder if there's a meaning behind it, if these particular flowers kind of have a connection with certain types of wildlife. I don't know. It's just interesting how uh, he's put these, these things together. So Miss Muffet and Pansy. So we've got the pansies there and Miss Muffet and the spider. That one's really fun, actually. Um... Yeah, it's, it's, it's so good. Then we have Orchid and Mantis. So another Mantis. This is what I mean, you see, by we're seeing repetitive um, use of animals, the same animals in this book. And I'm wondering if it does have any meaning as to why. Uh, I'd love to find out. Orchid and Dragonfly. So Orchids again, but with a different animal or creature. Then we have Peace Lily Fay. As you can see, the peace lily, she sat upon it. And there's some butterflies in the framing this time. So it is very Alphonse Mucha inspired, you can tell. That very, very Art Deco uh, distinctive look. Plumeria and gecko. So again, a very interesting choice of animal to use, the gecko. We have the queen of bumblebee and sunflower. This one I can imagine looking stunning because it's going to have so many oranges and yellows and bright, warm, sunny colours. And the great thing about Art Deco, although it isn't my favourite personally, is that you can treat it almost like a stained glass piece. So when you're colouring it in, don't worry that you have to colour, you know, for example, this dress with all of its silk folds and things like that. You could make every single one of these sections a different and separate pane of stained glass and it would look amazing, actually. So I might have to try that myself now <laughs> just come up with it. Rose and Butterfly big roses down here so generally that's what we get the flowers across the bottom I'm seeing snapdragon and hercules beetle snowflake fae so we've got a cute little child fairy here again with the snowflakes that we saw earlier with ice queen a spider and moonflower 
this is a huge spider and he's looking you know totally comfortable with this but I guess they're having a cup of tea together so they must be friends but can you imagine that just walking in for tea no thank you uh, water lily fay so just thinking about that stained glass idea can you imagine if you bought this book and you coloured all 40 illustrations in that stained glass mosaic kind of design and then put them all together as one huge kind of mural panel on the wall I'm just thinking how amazing that would look yeah bumblebee fay so you can see she sat in a sunflower here and the bees are taking their nectar and i think she's collecting some as well we've got mouse and tulip early self-explanatory racing snail this one's fun so she is literally racing on this snail she looks gorgeous she's got her wand out her receptor whatever and in the background we have snails and toadstools this is called roadie grasshopper so let's have a look, where's the grasshopper? Ah, he's here. And there's another here as well, just seeing if there's any others. And yeah, just the fairy magic as well is incorporated into all of this. So it really takes both an amazing imagination and an amazing talent to be able to pull off what you're, you know, seeing in your imagination. <laughs> I guess that's the same for any illustrator. But yeah, it's just, it's incredible. I can't imagine being able to draw like this. So we've got seahorse. So we have a mermaid fairy. I think it's the first one of the book that is... An underwater theme or a watery theme maybe the only one of the book now thistle and shamrock so this one is definitely um, it definitely has its roots in the Celtic you can see the Celtic knot in the panel behind her she's playing the harp and this could be a raven or something and of course we've got the thistle and the shamrocks as well finally we have a tulip face so that little girl is back again she's sat within a tulip and she's making friends with this cute little ladybird. So that's the end of the book. I always enjoy showing you the new colour in Heavens. Um, there's always something different to see. And they're always beautiful, even if they're not quite your style. If it's not an um, you know an edition that you're going to be picking up this month, that's totally fine. Everybody has different tastes and that's what makes it so fun. But undeniably, this book is stunning. And uh, I'd love to know what you think of it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.